Katrina. I just kind of wanted to get on and talk about space heaters. Isn't that fun? So I full-time live in a camper and not like what most of you are thinking. I'm not traveling. It's stationary here in Colorado. The price for a camper trailer is a lot cheaper than a house. And so, um, I bought a camper trailer. I still live on the farm property where the rescue is, but now I have a space of my own. And one of my biggest complaints so far has been, I hate the propane heater. I hate it. We don't have a vent in the bedroom, which really sucks. <laughs> like little Noxie. Um, we don't have a vent in the bedroom, so it freezes in the bedroom. So I bought a little tiny space heater. I mean, it's tiny for the space for the bedroom and it keeps it nice and toasty for as little as it is. I'll try to link that somewhere. I don't know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. So downstairs, um, there's one, two, three vents for the heat, but I am a whole whopping five, one and maybe 100 pounds, and getting the propane heaters in and, or propane tanks in and out of the fifth wheel is just a really big challenge for me. I have to have somebody come over and help me because I just can't do it. Um, not only that, but I don't like the smell of it. I don't ask me. So, I bought this Honeywell, um, Trying to see if it had any information on it. This Honeywell heater, it swivel or it rotates. It has timer settings. It has um, a thermostat on it. And this works really well most days. Um, my camper, I keep it colder down here than I do in the bedroom. I shut the middle divider up in the bedroom. Um which keeps it warmer up there and colder down here for the long haired dogs and the cats. And so this works wonders, but the last couple of nights it's got about four or five degrees out and I don't have a skirting around the trailer yet. So it gets really cold down here. So that was my first issue. My second issue is, is I can't run this, the laptop, um, the lights, and the microwave at the same time. I, I don't understand um, electricity and all that, so I don't fight it too much. But I can't do that. And this pulls about 12 watts, which doesn't seem, or amps. Hang on. Yeah, it pulls 12 amps. Sorry, guys. This is not my forte. You hear it beeping every time it hits the ground. Um, so this pulls 12 amps on my 15 amp downstairs. So, um, I bought this new space heater. Now this gets to the point where I'm actually making the video. This guy is hopefully going to retire. Or um, I may move him up to the bedroom. We'll see. But I talked to a lot of full-timer RV and camper trailer and bumper pull and toy hauler um and I didn't want to do this this was a little above my price range I'm not gonna lie it wasn't super expensive um but I still wasn't thrilled about it to fill both my propane tanks it's about 56 dollars and I'd have to do it every other week if I were to solely rely on propane so I cowgirled up and I bought this Per everybody's recommendation, this is the Heat Storm Florida Wall Infrared Heater. It's the PHXG version. Um, it pulls about the same wattage. It pulls anywhere from 12 to 6, 6 to 12 amps, depending on the setting. This can be wall mounted. It can also sit on the ground. So, um, there's quite a few reasons why I bought this one, and I'm going to kind of go into that before I open it. So, it can heat quite a large area. It can do about 
150 square feet by itself if it doesn't have anything else. If it's a secondary heat, it can heat 750 square feet. And so that sounded pretty good to me. Not only that, it only weighs about eight pounds. Um, I will have to move this camper eventually, so I want to make sure that everything in it is as light as possible. It has a child lock on it. Um, sorry. It has a child lock on it, so they can't press buttons and change it all, which I have cats and dogs and all kinds of weird stuff, so that happens. It has overheat protection, has no harmful fumes, has a digital thermostat. It is quite operation. It has tip over shut off, and then it's safe to touch the grill on it. Um, which, when you have a very nosy cat, is helpful. I got the gray one from Home Depot. It was about $12 cheaper than the white one. It does come in white, gray, and black. Home Depot was the best place I had found it. Cheapest. You can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can get it off, um, Amazon. You, all of that. I got two-day shipping from Home Depot, and so that was exciting. This is really difficult to get open. So, everyone that I've talked to likes it. Like I said, I have another space heater up in the bedroom, which I'll probably move to the bathroom, and I'll move this one up to the bedroom. Maybe. I don't know. So that's kind of the plan. But every one that I talk to has two of them in their camper. One downstairs and one upstairs. I wanted to see how this downstairs one worked first before I spent more money and got another one on it. With shipping and all of that, it was $92. It, by itself, it was like 87 and the white one, I want to say, was 96 So, there's that. It's a lot sturdier than I thought it would be. And it has a handle on it, so that's cool. So, I don't know if I mentioned this, but it can be wall-mounted. It has a remote. It can be wall-mounted. Or it has feet that it can just sit and work so i'm obviously going to put it on the ground just because i don't feel comfortable mounting stuff in the camper if we got to the point where i did i know exactly where i'd put it over behind you guys on the wall because that's makes the most sense so so far, it looks really well made. It has a filter on it, which is beyond cool to me. Oh, it has two filters on it. That's awesome. And it comes with a level to hang it. So, let me pause you guys and read the instructions before I try to do anything because I've just learned my lesson. Okay, so I figured out how to put the feet on these, and I just wanted to give you guys instructions kind of make sense, kind of don't. Flip your heater over backwards. I have one foot on already. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold this backwards and slide it in. I can stop shaking. Seriously, it's not this difficult. Apparently, I'm just struggling today. So, like that, 
I was trying to put it in the wrong side. And it just slides together. And then from there, you'll take the two wing nuts and there's bolts on the bottom of here. And you're just gonna bolt them in. And they kind of slide right where they need to go. There's little um, ledges on the bottom of it that kind of pop it right into place. It also has wall instructions. Like I said, not going to do that because I don't feel comfortable enough. But... I'm going to keep it just in case. It's just two anchors and screws. And then this back part goes on to hide where the cord comes out. I'm trying to be productive, but I can't, you can't really see. And then it completely covers the back. So from here it just has your two prong outlet and let's flip you guys around or get me up and plug it in and show you how it works. So hold on just a second. Okay so I'm gonna do all this off the remote control because I think that's a handy feature. So, maybe. Helps if you pull the battery tab out. So that kicked it on and it automatically goes to 65. I'm going to have it do 70. And you can change the brightness on it. So if it's in your bedroom, you can dim the screen down so it's not as bright. You can set your timer, your power, your plus and your minus for power, your high power and your low power, and then your light. So I really like the way it looks. Um, it looks is really nicely made and I'm just a fan so far. So this was the Heat Storm Florida Wall Infrared Heater PHXG version. I got it from Home Depot. And yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys who are full timing in your camper. You can already see the red at the bottom. It's heating up, but you still can touch it. It's like a plastic overlay. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And I hope you guys have a good day.